it's not just yesterday this happened. The association has been against the um, banning of the internet for some time now, representing the fishers, and especially those who are users of the internet. Um, if you can recall, in November of last year, we were down in Danbury and we had a well-attended rally with fishers, and the, it was a sounding no to the ban of the internet from these fishers. We continue our work, and um, we realize that knowing the behavior of, and I come directly and say this, the minister who was responsible for fisheries, because you know the house has been dissolved. So um, I, I, I say, I, I think I can put it that way, was responsible for fisheries, was always and working in league with Oceana, see how best they could have uh, slip uh, some way or the other to get it in to have a ban on the So when we saw or heard about it on Friday, it was a surprise to us. We knew it was coming to that, but we have our agenda set. And I won't be giving out much at this point. I, I'm making it clear from now, but we'll be moving forward. Um, one of the first thing was, because we're here now, is because we sent a press release stating our uh, um, negative, the negative effect of, of the, the lead ban if that should be continued. And we're asking the government to rescind that aside. Now, Mr. Fuller, you mentioned that um, in, the, in the press release, it was mentioned that the association was not, uh, if I could get this correct, was, was not, around the table per se, um, in terms of uh, the decision that was made on Thursday last uh, for this prohibition. Um, was it a case that the association was sidelined or was it that you guys were invited and just didn't show up? It was a deliberate case not to invite the association because when you had the first task force, that was formed back in 2018. We had to fight to get on that task force. And in September of that year, 2018, we got on that task force. And we made our point clear. We had good support. We had other people came on board who were supporting us, not no to our band. And with all that, they still went ahead and tried to, to, to come out and pretend as though there was a band to be. The thing then went and government uh, our cabinet paper was sent to government, and government, if you can recall, in December of last year, sort of work out a deal where, you know, uh, the Prime Minister was clear on that, and he said, no way fishermen will allow a ban to happen. He said, you can check with Papa Mena. I remember clearly doing a, he did an interview and um, to have a ban. And um, what, what happened after that was they came with all sort of uh, memorandum and started like, working out to see what could be done and slip in and see if they can do what they call a transition for alternative livelihood for fishers. Fishers turned at them, but they went further and tried to see how best they can undermine and get into the, some of the fishers and see if they can buy them out to get them to sign some sort, some kind of agreement. And um, I'm not sure, but I think some did that because of the pandemic and the Shot of cash and everything at this time, but um, the majority of fishers are saying no to this ban, and we maintain that ban. We maintain that 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 um or argument. Has the association since since the association has gotten the news, or since fishers received the news on Friday, because this was this their instrument was signed on Thursday when the, when the news broke on Friday. Did the association or has the association uh, thought about undertaking a poll um, of its membership to have a concrete number to present to say um, this percentage of our association use Gilnet for their livelihood and of that number, um, this is the percentage that say they are against uh, this prohibition of gill nets. Has that been done or will that be done? Um, that I can say is an, uh, what we had already 
put it down earlier, like from in last year. Um, when we went to Dangriga, we were able to get an amount of fishers who were saying no, and we still had more than that. But what happened? The behavior of Oceana sort of wanted to control and try to prohibit fishers who been involved with the gillnet fishery to deny them their license. And if you can recall, they brought down the number to just over 100, then they were 80, and then I think now they're looking at some 30. Yeah, when there's well over 200 fishers who use the net and use it sustainably to support their families. So um, in answering your question, yes, I think we have a fairly good number that will be affected if there should ever be a ban, because I'm not concerned it's to really be a ban. It's an acceptable sign. And I don't want to get into legalities at this point with it, right? But um, there are well over 200 fishers who use Gilnet throughout the country of Belize. Um, a lot of single mothers are involved. We'll go to Sartani and this place to see how many mothers out there using Gilnet for, for their survival and livelihood. And this will affect, I mean, it, it has a rippling effect that goes far beyond just those who are the real users of it, the harvesters with, with Gilnet. I come to the cleaners, the processors. And if you, if you go into my um, press release to say refer to processors and things that will be affected dearly on that. No? Mr. Fuller, in terms of this, I want to get this on the record definitively. Is the association totally against the ban of gillnets use in fishery? What is the association's position on that? Or is it a case where the association um, is of the view that it can be phased out in a longer period of time? What is the association's position? The association, and especially the Gillette users, are saying no to a ban on Gillette, period. The reason is there are laws and regulation in place. And um, we use it in a sustainable way. Just for example, and I, I, to, to let me get it clear, the picture clear with you. It's illegal and you can get your sentence if you have a firearm, which is a deadly weapon. But there are regulations in place, laws in place. You must get a license. You have something you have to do. It's the same thing in Guinness. Guinness being used for, um, from Jesus Christ was on earth. That was a Guinness they used with Peter and Paul. And we need to bear that in mind. Those fishers that use the lead are saying no period to abandon the gillet. There's no need to have a band gillet. The Food and Culture Organization of United Nations put a, a grade and gillet as a 5.5 .5 out of 10 of a suitable gear. And it further states that no gear is a perfect gear. But what you do, you put regulations in place and that will get whatever if you think there are uh, damages, minimal effect of them and try to update things time and time again. So there's no need to, to do a ban on Gillette. There's no need to put any ban in a developing country like Belize, especially in Canada with the pandemic on where nothing much is happening. As a matter of fact, I go to forum, Mr. Picard, I want to get this clear with you. In April, when the pandemic hit us hard, the con season, the lobster season was closed. And only fishermen with Gilnet were able to keep the supply of fish product for the local market. So you see how important it is to, to, to have Gilnet in use. Gilnet does not kill the way they sell, kill, uh, the term I use to say that it's a destructive gear, no, no. And I, I go back to the gun. What is more destructive than a gun? But once it's used a proper way, then you kind of eliminate are cut down as much and minimize as much as possible, ain't you call destruction? No, there's a very, and I, I, I'm just doing so that you get a picture where, where we arrive at no period to abandon it. When you hear these people speak and talk about, oh, there's a, um, it's so destructive and you have catch that you, you buy catch. That's a term they use. By catch means, anything that you did not go to catch at that time. Now, for example, if you would go to say, looking for snappers, but you might catch a lobster, or you catch kingfish or whatever, let's just do that, that, that you can understand what I'm saying. And you catch that, that's considered by catch. But everything the gillette catch 
whenever it catches it, can be used and sold at the market here in Belize. You see, so it, it's, it's a term that these people, a fancy term that these conservation environments try to bring down on people as a bycatch, and they do, this is all waste and be thrown away. There's nothing we throw away. Everything is being used and consumed at the market. Mr. Fuller, there, has, there seems to be a coalition of NGOs um, that have been, let's, let's um, put it like, let's put it and say uh, around the table over the last two years in terms of moving towards a ban, uh, a ban on gillnet usage. Um, your release doesn't hold back any punches and call them to face <laughs> NGOs. They are. They are. Um, <laughs> did these have, have, did your association work in tandem with these different NGOs to gain their support in terms of regulating the use of Gilnet? And if so, did they just uh, spit, uh, spin around on you guys and say, well, this is the way to go? And we'll and we'll follow Oceana. Call it to fit. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. From you see, we all the fishermen are all willing to work with others, NGOs, no matter what. We try to work with them, and they will come and to give you a pretty side of something, and to what to this we talk, we set you up on something. We set up fishermen from time to time. As a matter of fact, fishermen are so frustrated with these people that they don't want to attend meetings where these NGOs are. Because what normally happens at a meeting is to sign the attendee list. And fishermen realize that whenever they sign these lists, it comes back to haunt them and say, oh, 19 were there and they have the names there, agree to what was done at them, even though they oppose it. And so they say they don't want to attend and sign no more lists when they go to meetings with these people. So to let me, um, get clear to your question. Yes, it is something happened to some of the fishers and that's why fishers don't want to, 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 to tolerate them anymore. And that's why I made it clear, we will not work with you until we get this thing resolved because we, the BSA, um, Mr. Picard, was somewhat, wasn't as active as it is to, today. There were um, people there, but now we have a set that sits there that can maneuver and move around and get things done the way it should be done. And so now they are feeling the punch, like what you said, a whole no punch, punches, hours out, they can feel the punch coming from the fishermen. And this will continue because we're going to fight it to the bitter end. 